Welcome to another video. We have another integral that is a little bit unusual from what you would typically get as an integral, a definite integral in this case. I expect this to be convergent because again, if you're taking the square root of the square root of, no, the square root of the cube root of the fourth root of the fifth root, as you can see, um, the number is getting smaller and smaller. So I anticipate that this is going to converge. Okay, let's get into the video. So typically a problem like this will show up in a competition because um, you expect it to find some quick trick for this. But generally, whenever you have nested um, radicals like this, you might want to rewrite it or find some, another way of presenting it. And because the roots are changing as you keep going, definitely the numbers are getting smaller. So I would say, let me write it in exponent form maybe I might see something clearer. So I'm going to say that this integral is the integral from zero to one of, I'm going to write x. Now I'm multiplying x times. Now this is going to be the square root of x. So the next expression here is the square root of x. Okay. It makes it easier for me to see. Now, I am multiplying it by this third x, but this third x has the square root and the cube root on top of it. So it's going to be times the square root of the cube root of x. Okay, times, if we continue this trip, this is what we're going to end up seeing. We have dx. Let me show you what this means. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times square root of x is x to the one half. This, the square root of the cube root of x will be equal to the sixth root of x, which we can write, in fact, in pieces like this. We can write it as x to the one third raised to power one half. And the next term is going to be x to the one fourth to the one third to the one half. So it's gonna be x to the one over four to the one third to the one half. Okay, I'm gonna do tap, tap, tap because this, this is somewhere I'm going. Now pay attention to what we're seeing. It looks like you're beginning to build a pattern with the exponents. This is 4, 3, 2, this is 3, 2, this is 2, and this is nothing. These look, look at the denominators. They look like, by the time you multiply this, you'll be getting factorial expressions like this. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x raised to power, watch this, 1 over 1 times x raised to 1 over 1 times 2, or let's say 2 times 1. Let's make it 2 times 1 times x raised to power. This is going to be 3 times 2 times 1. Well, we don't have anything. 1 over, because 1 times 1 is 1, the bottom is going to be 3 times 2 times 1. x to the 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now you see where we're going. So it looks like everything is a factorial expression. Now, if we add up all of these exponents, because it's the same base in every case, we're going to have this to be equal to this integral. Well, again, I'm going to call it i. Okay, so this i is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of x raised to power. I'm going to add up all of these exponents. 
So it's going to look like um, this is 1 plus 1 over, over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus tap 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 1 over n factorial because remember this goes to infinity depending on how accurate you want to get But we know something that looks like this. Let's go back. You see this guy, e to the x, has several different ways of expressing it. One way that's similar to what we have here is that e to the x is equal to the sum from, let's say, k, let's not use n, k equals zero to infinity of x raised to power k over k factorial. This is the definition of e when you're using infinite series definition for it. It starts from zero and then you go all the way to infinity. Now you can stop on the way depending on how precise you want your answer to be. So how does this relate to this? Well, Let's take a case where our x equals 1. e raised to power 1 is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 raised to power k. Now, 1 raised to any power is 1. So, this is just going to be 1 over k factorial. Well, this clearly looks like this. So this sum starts from zero. Uh, unfortunately, our sum here starts from one. Okay, this one can be written as one over one factorial. We can write it as one over one factorial. I just didn't want to create confusion there. So it's as if we're not starting from zero here, we started from one. Well, we can write this one more way. We can say, so anytime you're trying to match series expansions and they don't match, you can move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in zero first. If I plug in zero, I'm going to have one over zero factorial is the first expression here, plus one over one factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, but when you notice plus, tap, 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 tap. What you notice is from here on, it matches what I have here. The only part that doesn't match is this part. We know that 0 factorial is 1, so 1 over 1 is 1. Ah, so this part is what we need to go replace in this integral 0 to 1 x raised to what power would it be well we cannot say it's this because this is the part that we want to fix so what we can do is move this part over to the side so that it becomes e raised to power 1 minus 1 over 0 factorial well see this part where do i write it well you can easily see it that this part that we want to replace is going to be tap ta da da e raised to power 1 minus 1 over 0 factorial is 1 over 1, which is the same thing as e minus 1. So this integral is actually a, I forgot dx here, e minus 1. So this could have been written like this, and then everybody would be able to integrate this. 
So applying the laws of, remember that this is a constant, e minus one is a constant, so we just apply the typical laws of integration, principle, the power rule. Here we're gonna have, you add one and you divide by your answer. So if we integrate this, um, we're gonna add one to this, which gives us x to the e, so we have x to the e divided by the same e. And then we're gonna evaluate from zero to one. That's it. So if we plug in one, we're gonna end up with one raised to power e over e minus zero raised to power e over e. Well, that answer is gonna be equal to one over e minus zero, which is one over e. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.